If there is one thing both collectors and resellers alike can agree on, it's that we both f***ing hate backdooring. Two years ago, we saw the most pronounced example of this when Jordan's very own son was involved in the Jordan 1 trophy room situation. Yes, the man's very own seed. Of course, this was an extremely profitable endeavor for all involved since the retail was only $200 while resale was well over $1,000, allowing for a healthy margin for the parties backdooring as well as the parties buying the backdoored pairs too. Now, this of course was not the first example of a massive backdooring scandal. There are literally countless examples of this occurring over the past several years alone. Another huge one was the Jordan 1 Soulfly, which was apparently cancelled due to safety concerns, and they then did a raffle and tried to show a bit of it on Instagram Live, but everyone knew what would really happen with the overwhelming majority of pairs. This was still pretty controversial up until they later got exposed for also backdooring the Travis Scott Jordan 1 Lowe's. At the end of the day, there have always been and always will be backdooring situations like this, especially for very profitable sneakers like the ones mentioned. The reason is obvious, greed. But what if I told you, it isn't always about greed. What if I told you that the amount of stores that backdoor will increase significantly over the next two years? And it won't just be extremely hyped sneakers like Travis, it'll be average Jordan 4s with $50 profit. What if I told you your favorite local mom and pop that vowed to never backdoor will likely start backdooring too? Well, if it's not just greed, what is it then? Survival. Before I explain this, I want to preface that I'm not defending any stores that backdoor by any means. Rather, I just want to shed light on a subject that very few people would try to rationalize. And I want you guys to understand why these things happen in business. When a sneaker store wants to sell a pair of Travis Scott's or some other extremely hyped collaboration, Nike doesn't simply sell pairs to the store. You see, Nike recognizes the immense value that these sneakers carry for the store. And here lies one of the most important overlooked aspects of Nike's business model that most schools are never going to teach anybody. Nike knows that a store selling Travis Scott's will attract many more customers to the store, the website, and potentially allowing the store to increase revenue on their other products, potentially becoming a loyal customer long term as well. And they also know that stores can choose to backdoor the sneaker if they so desire, making a lot of profit directly on top of the increased engagement they received on, say, social media for the release. Nike is not stupid. They're not just going to give this immense value out free of cost. Otherwise, they'd be leaving a lot of money on the table in terms of other value. Oh no, they need something to gain from this too. Why would they bother taking a loss selling to a store when they could easily sell it on their own site for a greater margin? Well, when Nike creates these contracts to sell these very high products, these contracts also force the stores to buy tons of other products. Now, these products do include some sneakers, but not just that. There's a lot of absolute garbage included in here that quite literally never sells at these stores. For years, they simply collect dust. And if stores do want to sell these complete bricks, whether they be track suits, socks, or anything of that nature, they usually have to take a pretty big loss. And even then, some of the stuff is so trash that it doesn't even sell at all despite the huge loss. This is a massive reason why Nike intentionally makes these items very limited, such as a Travis Scott, because it allows them to get rid of these other products for a profit through these contract deals with other retailers, allowing them to shift the burden onto these small retailers. And here's another thing. Nike does not care if a store backdoors. As long as that store is paying these big checks, and the bad publicity of backdooring is kept to a minimum, Nike will continue feeding them these contracts. That's why when these big stores get exposed for backdooring, nothing changes. All that matters is their bottom line, just like all businesses. This is an absolutely brilliant aspect of their business model, and it's very underappreciated. You create a product with significantly lower supply than demand, then use that product and leverage it to sell products with higher stock than demand to other merchants allowing you to still make a profit on those products that would have caused you a loss otherwise. And so, you should stop blaming resellers for high resale prices on these very limited items. Blame the business model. 
The market will reach an equilibrium regardless if there are resellers or not. And it's Nike who is deliberately choosing to make these products limited, primarily for the purpose of this business model. Of course, they have additional incentives too, such as viral marketing, long-term customer loyalty, but this is a massive reason that's often overlooked that I wanted to make clear to you guys. But I digress, this will get its own video one day. For now, back to back door. As you can see, these retailers that are getting these hype products are getting a lot of stuff that simply won't sell with that deal. These retailers, whether they're big or a mom and pop store, need to make an overall profit in order to survive just like any business. When all that other trash that Nike forced them to buy does not sell, or at least sells less than what they initially predicted for a profit, then they can be at a massive loss on each of these deals, putting them at risk of complete collapse. And so, what are they left to do as a last resort? Backdoor. And once they do it once, they'll keep doing it, more and more until it becomes embedded in their reputation. Now I hypothesize that this pattern is going to increase as disposable income and the velocity of money decreases. If you watched my recent macro sneaker market video, you'll know that things could get very bad over the next two years and onwards, even if they temporarily improve in between this period. With that said, it is very likely that these retailers overestimated sales of these trash brick items and consequently will have to resort to backdooring in order to keep their business afloat, just to survive. Again, don't interpret this as sympathy for them, I'm not trying to defend them by any means, I just want you guys to understand these things, and I don't think many people are willing to take on this position. Hopefully, you also took away some interesting lessons regarding an overlooked aspect of Nike's business model that I have yet to see any schools teach, but it's certainly a very effective one that maybe you could implement into one of your businesses one day. Now, how effective will it be when these stores start tapping out? I don't know. Perhaps that's why Nike is already taking steps to move more towards a direct-to-consumer model. That, along with why the market will always reach an equilibrium, are great topics for another day. So, subscribe and enable post notifications if you're interested in those or any sneaker-related updates. And for more urgent updates like shock drops, follow my Twitter, KeithAdam10. And for early information, before those shock drops actually occur, follow Endurance for future restocks. With that said, have a great rest of your day. Hope you learned something. I'll see you guys later.